We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are once more gathered around this Eucharistic table. Let us thank the Lord for bringing us to this day. And let us be sorry for the sins that we have committed as we prepare for this Eucharistic celebration. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, Grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, that I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have come an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because seal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. 
Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I look for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See you lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bands he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Please stand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord, he said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas' his betrayer said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. First of all, I would like to welcome all of you, especially the pilgrims who are coming from all over including the people from Holy Trinity School in Padre Garcia, Batangas. You must have left Batangas early to come here to the Manila Cathedral. And also I would like to welcome the religious women who are joining us today. Yesterday it was the version of John. 
the gospel came from the gospel of John. Today, the version is from Matthew. But the story is the same, even if it is coming from a different version. The story of betrayal. You know, somebody said, the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from an enemy. Kaya mas masakit sapagkat ang pagtataksil ay nanggaling sa isang kaibigan. Judas was Jesus' friend. Judas belonged to the inner circle of Jesus. He was one of the twelve. And yet, in spite of the closeness, Judas betrayed him. What was the reason? Why did, Jesus, why did Judas betray Jesus? Money? Maybe. For the, uh, for, the, for the price of a slave at that time, Judas betrayed his friend for 30 pieces of silver. Ganun lang ka-cheap ang tingin ni Judas sa kanyang Panginoon. Tatlumpong pirasong pilak, presyo ng isang alipin. Why did, Jesus, why did Judas betray Jesus? Is it only because of money? Or he also wanted to push Jesus to the edge so that Jesus will act and be the political Messiah that probably Judas expected him to be. Kumbaga sa, sa Tagalog sinabi natin, inilagay natin, tinulak natin sa sulok para mapilitan si Jesus na kumilos. Why did Judas betray Jesus? Was it because Judas did not understand the Lord fully? Hindi niya na, nakilala si Jesus sa kabila ng marahil tatlong taon nilang pagsasama, we will never know because the Gospels did not mention the reason why Judas betrayed Jesus. But here, you will see also why, why the Lord chose Judas did he not know that later on, this person that he would be making as disciple would be a betrayer, a traitor? Di kaya niya alam? Hindi ba siya Diyos? Pero siya din ay totoong tao. Kaya hindi rin niya siguro alam. Kayo ba alam ninyo? kung sino sa mga kaibigan ninyo ang magtataksil sa inyo. Pero sa kabila noon, pinili pa rin ni, Hu, ni Jesus si Judas sapagkat umaasa siya na si Judas ay gagamitin ang kanyang kalayaang pumili para pumili sa mabuti. And you know, that is what is beautiful with God. God respects our freedom. God is not so happy with everything that we do. Because most of the time, we do what is contrary to God's will. But God will not prevent us from doing what we want to do because He respects our freedom. Imagine kung ang Diyos ay lagi tayong binabantayan at pipigilan ang lahat ng ating gagawin. Wag mong gawin yan. Wag mong gawin yan. Hindi pwede. Eh ano tayo? Robot. Alipin. 
hindi magawa kung anong gusto. Pero hindi ganun ng Diyos. Iginagalang niya ang ating kalayaang pumili. Kahit na ang pagpiling ito ay pagtalikod sa Diyos. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, today, this morning, I also invite you to have some examination of conscience. Kasi baka may sabihin nyo, eh, kung ako yun, hindi mangyayari sa akin yun. Hindi ko tutularan si Judas. We can never be sure. Because many times, we use our freedom wrongly. Mali ang pagpili natin. Kaya nga, siguro maganda bilang paghahanda natin sa mga dakilang pagdiriwang ng Webes Santo, Biyernes Santo at Linggo ng Muling Pagkabuhay, magandang itanong natin sa ating mga sarili, paano ko ginagamit ang kalayaang ibinigay ng Diyos sa akin? Paano ako pumipili? Ano ang batayan ng aking mga desisyon? Ang sariling convenience, pleasure, popularity, or do we choose based on what God wants us to do? Judas was free, but he chose to use the freedom wrongly. May we not like be Judas. Amen. Please stand. As we approach Good Friday, with confidence in our loving God, let us recall the saving action of Jesus' servant. And to every petition, our response would be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear <coughs> our prayer. That those who suffer unjustly may receive God's comfort through a clean conscience, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our own sufferings may strengthen our faith in the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those among us who are putting off making their confession because of pride, fear, or laziness may come to the realization of the need for God's forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and all those who suffer may experience the healing presence of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may share in Christ's resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us pray for the intentions of this Mass and also for our own particular needs. Lord God, you gave us the example of your Son to show us how to live and die. Grant us the faith we need to follow him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here and graciously grant that celebrating your son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, <clears throat> holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and hurt, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ruperta, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As one family, let us pray to our common Father in the words given to us by His Son. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our many sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Endow us, Almighty God, with a firm conviction that through your Son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I forget the Wednesday family rosary, tonight will be hosted by the Diocesan Shrine of Our Lady of Namakpakan in La Union. Please follow us on Facebook page of the Manila Cathedral at 9 p.m. Thank you. Sorry.